All right, so today the topic I will be covering includes variants of uncertain significance or what is also called a VUS. Um, so first, I find it helpful to understand the basics of genetic testing in order to better understand what a variant of uncertain significance is. So one important thing to keep in mind is we have all of the genes that are included on a genetic test. So for example, we all carry two copies of BRCA1, we all carry two copies of BRCA2, um, and it's, they're actually helpful genes because we all have them, um, but therefore a genetic test is not looking to see if you carry these genes, but really the intent of the test is to look for a change or a mutation that causes a gene to no longer work correctly. Um, so whenever someone is undergoing a genetic test, there are three types of results positive, negative, and something called a variant of uncertain significance. So I like to think of our genes being like a string of letters that form a sentence. A genetic test essentially will help spell check all of these sentences or genes. Um, so it looks at each word individually to see if it's spelled correctly or not. Um, so if the lab is spell checking a gene, everything looks absolutely normal. That's what we consider a negative or a normal genetic testing result. If the lab spell checks the gene, they find a word that's misspelled that causes the, the gene to no longer work, that would then be considered a positive result. So what a variant of uncertain significance is, is when the lab is spell checking the gene, they find a word, it looks a little bit different than what they were expecting to find, but the lab just doesn't have enough information to categorize this as a positive or a negative result. So in other words, the lab doesn't know if this specific change causes the gene to no longer work or if the gene is working just fine and that change is just part of normal or natural human variation. So I think there's a couple important things to think about with uh, variants of uncertain significance. So the first one being is that they're very common. So humans have a lot of variation in our genes, and that's just part of what makes us who we are. Um, so if someone does have a genetic testing panel that's done, let's say it includes about 30 different genes, we would then anticipate that there's about a 30% chance that that person will identify or have a variant of uncertain significance identified in at least one of the genes that are looked at. Um, so for many people, if we take a step back, this type of result is actually going to be more common than a positive result. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that the understanding or interpretation of these variants can change over time. So as labs continue to learn more, there may be some updates to the classification of the variant. Um, so it's possible that a lab may upgrade a variant to something called likely pathogenic or what we would consider a positive result. So that would mean that the lab has learned new information that they believe provides enough proof or evidence that they think that gene is no longer working correctly um, as a result of that change. A lab may also downgrade a variant to something called likely benign, and that means that the lab believes that this is a harmless variant that does not impact the way that the gene is working. So I think it's also important to know that likely benign or benign variants are actually not included on standard genetic testing reports. So whenever a variant is downgraded, it actually means that if someone had genetic testing at that lab again, it wouldn't even show up on the report if it was considered likely benign or benign. Um, the interpretation of a variant can change in a year, it can take two years, it can take 10 years, it can take longer. Um, so I think it's important to keep in mind that this does evolve over time with the knowledge uh, that we have about genetics. Um, the other thing I think is important to keep in mind um, whenever somebody has a variant of uncertain significance is that we don't act on them. Um, so we don't change anything for the person that, that it's identified in. We don't typically test other family members and that's because we're not really sure it's a meaningful result. Um, we know that, once again, variants of uncertain significance are common. And we also know that these type of uncertain variants that are reclassified, actually a lot of the times are downgraded to likely benign. Um, so there are some recent publications from labs that have shown that 
variants of uncertain significance that are reclassified, we know that about 80 to 90% of them are actually downgraded to a likely benign variant over time once more information is learned. Um, so we know that many times the vast majority of these tend to be um, a, a harmless change. A genetic counselor can um, further help interpret variants of uncertain significance beyond a genetic testing report. So for example, they might um, they may be able to think about this variant in context of your personal or family history to see whether or not they think it's consistent. They can also help provide more information about how other labs might be categorizing this variant and whether or not it's even been previously reported by other labs. Um, and so I'd say the take home is in general, um, if you do have a variant of uncertain significance identified on your genetic test, that it's important to remain in contact with the person or provider that facilitated the genetic test. Um, you could also establish care with a provider who specializes in genetics, given that this interpretation may change over time. Um, and I would also say it's helpful to check in periodically to see if there may be updates to the understanding of the variant. I would say it makes sense to check in annually. Um, I think there are some variants that are going to be more concerning than others. So for those that are uh, look a little bit more suspicious, I think annually makes sense to check in. Um, so when a genetic counselor is usually following up about a variant of uncertain significance, um, there's usually a few steps that I take. So one of those steps would be contacting the lab itself who performed the test to see and check in to see if they've taken a look at it. Um, some of the variants aren't looked at until they see it again. So if it's a rare variant that the lab hasn't seen in five years, that means they haven't reevaluated it. Um, so if I have somebody reach out to me, then I make sure and I reach out to the lab to say, hey, can you take another look at this and make sure that um, your interpretation hasn't changed. Um, the other thing I usually will look in are public databases like ClinVar. Um, in there, there are going to be other lab interpretations um, if it has been seen before. Um, so that does help clarify what other labs might be thinking about the interpretation. And there are times where it might be discordant. Um, so once again, I think it is helpful to have a genetics specialist, somebody who has an understanding about how to make sense of that discordance um, and, and kind of putting it once again in context of their personal and family history.